It's time. It's time. For celebrate. Celebrate. The gift of Jesus. The gift of Jesus. And his presence in our lives. And his presence in our lives. Celebrating Jesus. The gift of Jesus. And his presence in our lives. Say name. Name. I know it's almost Christmas. I know it's almost Christmas. But I'm about to have it today. But I'm about to have it today. I'm about to excite him. I'm about to worship him and praise him and bless him when I understand who he is, what he's done, and why he has done it for my life. Think of a neighbor. I love him today. It ain't going to take a whole lot today. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul already gets ahead of my spirit. It outruns my hand. My tongue got to catch up with it. You know what I mean? My mind says, hold up a minute. Because I got to think about, I should not even be here. So some things should have happened to me. But I'm still here. And because of that, I'm going to take this season. I mean, if they're going to get me off from school, off from my job, they're going to let my kids come home. They're going to let me take some time off. They're going to even pay me while I'm home. I might as well celebrate Jesus and get a head start on it. And I know it ain't the 25th. But you ain't got to worry about what day it is. But if you know God has been good to you, you can celebrate right now. You can celebrate right now. I your heart. I got some wonderful people in my family. They have birthdays. And they celebrate for the entire month. Yeah. Ethel. <laughs> Skippy. <laughs> Pastor Burn. Yeah. They have a birthday in one month. But their entire family, man, they do. They, they, they celebrate the entire month. And their birthday. It's only one day in a month. Now I figure it this way. If they humanly can celebrate that birthday, that they only have one day, and they can do it for an entire month, why can't I celebrate my Savior, my deliverer, my healer, my restorer, my comforter, my waymaker, my provider, my stronghold, my high power, my waymaker? Why would I get a jump on celebrating Jesus? And excuse me about the celebrating for real. Give him a good shout of praise. See, the magic of Christmas is not the presence under the tree. It's the presence of God in your life. It is. It is. It's the ideal of this that Jesus, that, that he, he's so awesome to us. He, 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 he's this. He, he literally has come to show us just how much he loves us and cares for us. And the fact that he is a gift from God overwhelms my life. Because when you understand that a gift is this, something given voluntarily, without payment in return, to show favor, honor, worth, and value on an occasion as a gesture of an understanding that I want your assistance or I want a relationship with you. It's why when the Psalms wrote it, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Come on. Yeah. And the son of man that he would even visit them. Yeah. I don't mean no mind, but the angels know us sometimes. They know us before we was born too. And they look at us. They said, Now why in the world would you go give your son to them? Yeah. And God says, I sent them because I love them. Yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Yeah. That God loves you so much he would give you not a Moses, yeah. not a Philip, not a Daniel, not come on, not a Thomas. I'm going to give you my best. I gave, when I give, I give my best. I will bankrupt heaven, God, so he'll bring you to relationship, bring you to fellowship, to walk with you and to let you know how much I love you. So what I love about a gift is this, because you know, one of my love languages is gifts, you know what I'm saying? So I understand that when somebody brings me a gift, they must carry me in their heart a while before. That means God has been carrying you in his heart all of eternity. He was thinking about what he could give to you that would bless you, that would heal you, that would restore you, that would fill you, that would bring you joy, that would bring you strength. So both something that you needed and something that you wanted. Come on. Man, ain't no gift like that. Some people give some crazy gifts, but when somebody gives you both what you need and what you want and more than what you expect, that will send you in worship. So if you understand who Jesus is, I want you to understand God gave you what you needed, what you wanted, and way beyond all Excuse me while I celebrate. I want to get to a place where I just honor him every day and that my life becomes the gift back to him since he gave the gift of life to me already. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
the ideal of celebrating the gift of who he is and what he does for our life. As we begin turning our attention to celebrating Christmas this evening, ensure that the ideal of our celebrating is going to be focused on the entering, the coming, the, 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 the advent of Jesus Christ into our life. Making sure that during this season that we celebrate in such a way that everybody around you know who your God is. Yeah, yeah. That they know how you stand and how you live. That Isaiah 9 and 6, that he says, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government will be upon his shoulders. That he, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. That he, that we will know who he is and we will demonstrate that love in and through our life. Somebody say amen. 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 I come to celebrate Jesus this time. I celebrate Jesus. The greatest gift that wasn't wrapped up in silver, but wrapped up in spotted clothing. Yeah. I come to celebrate this year. I come to celebrate because listen, if you realize that people around you have passed and have gone on, situations have changed all over the nation, but yet you still still in Sydney yeah. in your right mind, with your right heart. Yeah. Your hands still working, your breath still working, your breath, you're, you're still living and moving. You got reason to celebrate. You ain't got to wait till the 25th. You can start worshiping him now. Is still partly together. Come on, that's your money. You got, you know, you got a few quarters still left in the bank. You still got some things going on with your work, and emotionally, you ain't as off as you used to be. But now you're gonna sit it now. You're gonna focus now. Your mind's a little sharper than what it used to be. Now that the Holy Spirit has been working on you, now that's all reason to celebrate Jesus. Celebrating that the Savior has come to our atmosphere, that Emmanuel, God with us, has now showed up in the flesh, and that He dwells with us, is around us, and even in us. That is so much to celebrate. Take yeah. it so much to celebrate. Yeah. So much. Mm. His name is Jesus. And if anyone going to celebrate this season, it ought to be a Christian. Don't you let no person that don't know him celebrate more than you. Come on, yeah. Amen. Matter of fact, if the office throws a party, you should show a party before they throw a party. That's right. That's right. That's right. They say, why are you so happy? Because I know what season it really is. Yeah. Y'all gonna have a moment, I got eternity. Oh, Y'all yeah. yeah. gonna have a holiday, but I have a holy day. Come on. Yeah. See, see, I really don't do Exodus because I know how important Christ is. Yeah. I can't even do season's greetings because I know it's about the king of kings. Yeah. 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 That you know that all man can give you a work to worship in this season and at this time and at this moment that if nobody else understands how important this season is, you do. Place in the ideal that we come to celebrate him as the Savior and the Lord and celebrate his mercy toward our life, that the Prince of Peace has now come to the planet. The wonderful counselor has now operated in the world. The everlasting Father has showed up to love us as sons and daughters. Come on. I don't know about you, but that just gets me crazily excited to know that he loves us that much. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Every, every, as a matter of fact, I love it enough that I see him as a gift. We need to see him as a gift of God, from God, that his heart, his character, he wants to give it to us as a gift. That's why he told the woman at the well, he says, girl, if you knew who the gift of God was, yeah. you would ask me to drink. I know you're thirsty, but baby, I could have filled you for eternity. Yeah. If you knew who the gift was, it's amazing that a gift could be so close and you could still miss it. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. My God. He says, if you knew who I was, girl, you would have taken the gift. Then even if he was instant and even instant, he says, even in that, I still were willing to give you a gift. Romans chapter 6, 23 says, the ways of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Somebody say, neighbor. neighbor. I'm celebrating for the gift that he is to my life. I don't like it because I found out about this about gift. Every gift usually has to be prepared. Before you give it, you already know what you're going to give the person. You start thinking about it, amen. And even in Genesis chapter 3, that's when God started preparing the gift. He says, I'm going to pick out the seed of the woman and crush the head of the enemy. He's going to crush his heel. I'm going to crush his crown. He had been prepared since Genesis chapter 3. Wow. He had been pre predestined the gift in the idea of how he was going to give it. That even in Revelation 13 and 8, he says, the Lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the world. I mean, when you put yourself on order eternally ahead of time, and then says, I'm waiting to give you this gift. When before you show up, I had the gift waiting on your life. Yes. He said, I even had it prepackaged, you know what I mean? That the word will become flesh and dwell among you. I was have a gift wrapping myself with myself. Yes. Can you 
give the Lord praise for the gift of Jesus Christ. Let's go, Bird. We're going to be talking about it for a little bit, but I want you to be able to celebrate. And celebrating, one of the things that have me to celebrate is we're celebrating being a receiver of the gift of Jesus. What I like about Mary, Mary encourages me in the ideal of her life because not only is she the mother of the Savior, but she's a portrait and a prophetic picture of a believer. That literally she's one that will walk with Jesus, receive Jesus, have him in her and come through her and be manifested that process all in the earth. So this celebration is the ideal of who Jesus is in me, who Jesus is to me, how I can receive him for my life and to my life. Say neighbor, neighbor. when you receive him, you're going to see something totally different. <laughs> The Bible says in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city called Galilee, named Nazareth, a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, and of the house of David, the virgin's name was Mary. The angel came in unto her and said unto her, Hail, hail thou art highly favored, and the Lord is with you. You are blessed among women. You know what? Sometimes God will talk to you, but first thing he's going to do, if you're going to be a gift, he's going to save you the same way he delivers Mary. Come on. He sends a word to her first. Yes. Oh, yeah. Tell you the neighbor. neighbor. Without a word, I can't even go there. I can't even go there. I need a word from God so that I can know God. I don't know him apart from him. I need to know that a word will show up in my world that will shift my entire world. Yes. He literally says that the angel comes and Gabriel comes to where she is and Gabriel begins to speak it because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the same way we got God is the way that she got God because an angel shows up, speaks the word into her world. She receives the word and her world begins to shift. Tell me, tell me excuse me. This is why Mary and me can celebrate, because when the word shows up, it begins doing something in your life. Psalms 107, verse 20 says, and he sent his word, and it healed them from their destruction. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Tell you, I love the word. word. Then when you realize that he is the word, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So he was sending himself to her so that she could receive him in the eye of her life. So that when she received him, then John puts it this way, as many as receive, I get the authority to become the son of God in the earth. Because he loves us. Yeah. And excuse me, yeah. nobody has the authority to stop you from being who you called to be. Yeah. Once you realize you have received who Christ is in your life, you have God given authority to be the bad man of you supposed to be, the man of God you supposed to be. I tell you, excuse me, this ain't about my family. This is what heaven has given me. And when I receive Jesus, I can operate as a son of God in the earth. Let me just check with you for a minute. Have you received any faith? Have you received any grace? Have you received any goodness? Have you received any mercy? Have you received any, any forgiveness? Have you received any love? Have you received his nature? Have you received his character? I'm sorry. I'm just talking to the Pope that I want to celebrate. You might not know what you really got. I got mercy. I got grace. I got love unspeakable joy in me. Excuse me while I really praise him for what I was saying. Like Mary received that word, and then he says this, thou highly favored, and in the original it means because you've been given grace. Come on. I ain't mad at him. For by grace I have been saved, not by faith. The same grace she got is the grace I got. The same Jesus she got is the Jesus I got. The same word she got hey, is the word I got. So I ain't mad at a girlfriend. What yes, blesses me is that he can find you even at your lowest point. Galilee is like 600 feet below sea level. The king of glory went to the lowest place to find somebody to put in purpose. Come on. Can I just say this for a second? I don't care where you come from. That qualifies all of us. Family, whatever state, whatever place that you have. And then he shows up, talks to you, gives a word to you, gives grace to you, gives his love to you, and say, come on, follow me and let me deliver something in your life. Say, excuse me, I receive all of that. I receive it, I receive it, I receive it, I receive the love of God. I receive
receive the grace of God. I receive the word of God for my life. Yes. And I receive it. Watch this as a gift. Hallelujah. Don't ever make God mad by trying to pay him back. My God. Jesus. My God. How you gonna pay God back for giving you the greatest gift you could ever be given? Yeah. Yeah. He gave it because he knew we couldn't afford it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he knew we couldn't do it ourselves. He said, I gave you a gift. A gift. A gift. Say a gift. A gift. Voluntary yeah. love towards your life. When I gave you Jesus, I gave you the best gift that I could yes. find. I looked around heaven and I couldn't find nothing better to give you. Yes. And then I gave it to you. Do you mind opening your mouth and just saying thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Say receive the gift. Receive the gift. Go ahead with the word. The word of God says, says this to John. He came to his own his own, received him not that he gave him and the men received him. Say it, receive him. Receive. Because you receive it, you receive power. He said, because unto them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He said, even them which are born, not out of blood, nor out of the will of flesh, but you've been born out of, not of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among them and beheld his glory, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Yeah. That means when me and you get Jesus, we get full of grace and truth. Yeah. Back in the day, the only thought we took is only talk that grace was just unmerited faith. Uh, it was that you got stuff that you didn't qualify for. Come you know on, what I'm saying? And the truth of the matter is you do, because the last breath you took. <laughs> Come on, if the ways of sin is death, Come then on. you know what? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Nobody Amen. should be in this building right now. Come on, that's right. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, excuse me. Yeah. That should make you celebrate by yourself. Yeah. He goes on and says for me, the young to understand it, that he's full of grace and truth, which means he overflows that grace toward our life and that truth toward our life. Then he goes on and says this, and Mary says it. Mary is so awesome because she reminds me again as a believer because the same way we got to confess and then we to be received salvation. She receives it by confession that after the angel comes, gives her the word of God for her life, tells her what God going to do, how he's going to work in her life. She by faith received it, received the grace of God with it by favor. Then she turns around and says, now I know who I am. You know who I am? Behold, the main servant of the Lord. If you ever got really bold about the gift that you got and you was really wasn't scared about showing everybody the gift you got, you weren't nervous about what they would think. You was bold in his gift, strong in his gift, strong in his power, moving in his nature, walking in his character. You will be real so bold. You will be like Mary. Mary doesn't really care who was around. Mary gets a moment in front of an angel and says, see, me a revelation of God was God loves me, cares for me, wants to talk with me, wants to hang out with me. You know what? I'm bold enough to tell you this. Behold! Oh, I was hanging with Joseph, but I need to tell you who me and Jesus are now. Behold! I ain't who I was yesterday. Behold who I am today. Behold! I was a young yellow girl there, but behold, I'm in the purpose of Christ now. Behold! body of Christ. Oh, come on. Oh, right now. I know who I am. Yes. That's why she goes on to celebrate a song after this, that the Lord has found a servant. Listen to her language. She says, behold the main servant of the Lord. Let it be according to your word. Yes. <laughs> I wonder how long it will take us to be like Mary. It ain't that I didn't know the word came or the favor didn't come. I don't know if I got bold enough to be able to say, every word that came is mine. Yeah. Mary was saying, whatever he said to me is what I'm going to be. Yeah. That his word now can become not only flesh for Jesus, but flesh in my life. Yeah. So then she goes and celebrates it. And so much so that the angel says, ain't no need for me to have the right to the it's something when you get so close to Jesus that the angels can leave because you got your worship down. The angel says, you ain't no need for me singing around you. You got your own song. <laughs> and ain't no need for me praising praise because you create praise for yourself. And ain't no need for you judging you how to worship because you learn how to worship and surrender 
and open your heart to Jesus and let him go to work in you and for you. You received it, so now he's going to be in your life doing work like never before. Christ in you is the hope of glory. And excuse me, I just want you to celebrate the gift that you've got. You've got Jesus. You have received the Lord towards your life. You received the grace of who you are. And now you can stand in the identity of who God has sovereignly made you. Yes. And it's all a gift. Oh, man. That'll make you crazy. Has anybody ever gave you a gift that didn't make sense? <laughs> Bless you. I mean, one time this lady showed up in our life when I was in the need of something. And she came in and gave us this money that we needed for Friday. And I was trying to figure out, God, how did you move her to give me what they gave us? He said, that's just it. I moved. And he, what happens to us is this realizing that it's God moving toward us to show how much he loves us. Hallelujah. It's in your name. I'm already going to have a good Christmas. I'm celebrating right now. Yeah. I'm, I'm already in Christian. I'm already in the moment. Don't you know for a Christian, every day is supposed to be Christian? Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 Go ahead to the next one. Verse 4 says this. Not only is the ideal you got to be received, but he also says that once she becomes that, then she becomes a carrier of the gift that she got. Come on. The Bible says it this way, it says, And then behold, shall shall conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and call his name Jesus. Say, I'm a receiver. I'm a receiver. Then I get to be a carrier. Then I get to be a carrier. Oh, yeah. Once I receive him, now God begins living in me and with me. Can you, I mean, it's one thing to know that you live in you. Come on. But if you ever get your head wrapped around the fact that God is hanging out inside you, too. Yeah. If you ever get the idea that conception now has took place, that a part of heaven is now living inside of you, as a person would say, matter of fact, Colossians was this way, to whom God will make known what is the riches of his glory, what is mystery among the Gentiles, which is like Mary, Christ in you, the hope of glory. And sometimes what it is is we don't realize the rich, just how rich God is. Yes. See, this is how rich he is. This is how rich he is. Ain't nothing you can do can overpay what he does. Amen. See, that's why you can't stay in depression because the blood is too much. Amen. You can't stay. You can't stay. You can't stay in, in those places where you're bound because the, the blood is worth so much before God and so weighty before Him that depression can't hold you, fear can't stop you, anger can't control you, shame shouldn't hold you. Come on, none of these things. Why? It's he's too rich. Yes. That's what he says. I'm trying to make no. You know what really does, Eugene? Yeah. When people see a person like me and say, you a pastor? And I go, they say, no way. I say, yeah, he paid for it. Because he's just that rich. Yeah. They go, you from the project? Nope, I'm from the kingdom now. <laughs> because he's just that rich. You was a one, you, you, you a husband? You a man? You a father? You all that? I didn't know I was just that rich. He made me that rich. Now you don't see my history. You now see the glory of God. When you get pregnant, stuff show up in your flesh. Can I ask you a question? Is Jesus showing up in your flesh? Is anybody noticing his person? Anybody noticing his character? Anybody noticing him developing in you, growing in you, changing, watch this, taking shape, taking space, and taking place? Come on. You know, I, found out, I found out that you know we got five kids. Praise God. So you know I know. Here's something. That when you really have someone inside of you, it will change your appetite. Change your appetite. Stuff that used to be good ain't good no more. But hi, hello. My appetite has shifted. I got an appetite for 
of him that no other person can take over from. I got an appetite for worship that I can't even stop myself. I got an appetite for his word that I gotta eat like crazy now. I got, I got an appetite. All of a sudden, when we really have him inside of us, and when he's really growing and maturing, when he's expanding who we are, when he's taking his place and his shape in our life, all of a sudden our appetite changes. Yes. You know what I found out too? When you got somebody growing in you, your attitude shifts. <laughs> I'm just hitting him because he got kids too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? And all of a sudden your attitude begins to shift, Elder, you know what I mean? And what, what, what used to not bother you now is just hot all the time, what's this all the time. Your attitude shift because somebody's present. You get an attitude about stuff you didn't have attitudes about. So now I don't even like when people say stuff to me no more about certain stuff. You can't call me certain things. I don't even go certain things. Matter of fact, I feel a different way about stuff I didn't even feel about in the other way. Because if any man be in Christ, he becomes a new creature. All things become passed away. All things become new. And I got a new attitude. Got a new attitude. Got a new attitude. I got a new. <laughs> then I get new affections. You know what I mean? I stop caring for stuff I used to care about. You should care if you called me or not. Wow. Oh, oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't care if I disappointed you and didn't disappoint God. Yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden, your, your affections and your appetite and all of them begin changing when Christ is in your life. Because now he begins setting your affections on things above and not on this world. And all of a sudden, folk that used to bother you don't bother you no more. Because now your affections are not on them. For this cause also, we thank God without ceasing. Sound like they celebrate thanking God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word, sounds like Jesus showed up, in which was you heard of us, you received it not as the word of man, but as the word of truth and the word of God that affectionately is also at work in you that believe. Amen. Excuse me, I want you to know Jesus is in here and he's working on me. Working in me. Working out something. It is his will, both the will and to do in my life of his But I don't even want it no more. I don't even know why it changed. Because he's showing up and he's taking his place and his place in your life. And affections have changed. Attitudes have changed. And appetites have changed. Yes. Yes. And it ought to be followed by some actions. That's right. <laughs> they changed too. Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God, two people. Amen. Amen. Philippians put it this way for it is God, like it was in Mary. It is God which works in you. Both to do of his good pleasure and of his will. All of a sudden, Mary wasn't just trying to get married. She didn't want booty. She wanted God. Yes. Her appetites changed. You know what I'm saying? Her actions changed. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, you got to lose. Sure did. Amen. <laughs> and she bored about it. Oh, hey, I'm the main servant of the Lord. And I don't know what Joseph was going through at that moment, but he. <laughs> You probably like, you trip, you shit. <laughs> and then you pregnant, and with somebody we ain't seen. Brother already thought she was tripping. Uh, he just didn't know it was God and her doing yeah. something new. Yeah. And that she had received the gift of Jesus for her life. And now that gift begins to work in her life. Somebody say hallelujah. He says, go ahead, brother. He says this. This is this. This is Galatians 4. And says, my little children, of whom I travail till Christ is born in you and formed in you. Like Mary had Christ developing in her life to the point that he would take over every area of her life. That's what happens when Jesus shows up in our life. He begins to travail in our life. All of a sudden, your attitudes and appetites and actions begin shifting and changing because Jesus has come. Two people say amen. amen. Colossians says, let this word dwell in you richly with all wisdom and teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs sound like they were celebrating. Why? It says singing in grace in your, heart, in your hearts unto the Lord. Come on. Why would they celebrate? He's present in our life. Yes. He's around us now. We can celebrate who he is. We understand that he's the Lord of glory, the King of kings, the Lord of the Lord most high. He's sovereign and holy. And now we can bless him and honor him. 
what John says, this is where we, we always go off. He says, you are of God, little children. You have overcome them. Why? Because like Mary, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Then excuse me. This is a good place to have a victorious praise right here. Yeah. Yeah. Praise. It's a victorious praise when you realize that you would have lost your mind. You yeah. went out of your mind and out of order and out of place and did some crazy stuff. But greater is yeah. him. Come on. I'm not just talking about good enemy. Sometimes greater enough for you. He's greater than your attitude. Greater than my action. Greater than my passion. Greater than my mindset. Greater than my sin. Greater than my problem. Greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. And he is a Hallelujah. Oh, That's the truth about it. Go ahead, go ahead, brother. This is this. Luke 2 says in this. Then they went to be taxed, every one of them, to the city. Joseph went to Galilee of Nazareth, and then he went to Judea, the city of that called Bethlehem. And I love that because in the process of that, you can't even keep them. Once you become a receiver of God, then you become a carrier of God, but you're going to have to release him sometime soon. Come on. Come on. Come on. Tell your neighbor, Jesus should spend his whole life in you. Yes. Oh. <laughs> He's got to come out of somewhere. He should come out of your mouth, come out of your head, come out of your heart, come out of your ear. I don't care where, but he got to come out. If not, it will be a stillbirth, yeah. oh, a miscarriage of purpose, a miscarriage of worship, a miscarriage of service, a miscarriage of obedience. Say, excuse me, but I gotta get Jesus out. I, I gotta get Jesus out. I gotta get him out to my wife. Get him out to my children. I know what's going to happen if I go become open yes. and get past myself and past my flesh, then somebody else could see Jesus. Yes. I'm trying to have Christmas show. I'm trying to, I mean, we're going to have it, but I'm just saying by the time we get there, we're going to be good. Because I got the mentality of a marriage that I got a gift that came to my life that now I got favor now because I'm a receiver now because I'm a carrier now. But I told you the other thing I found out that when somebody's a carrier, it messes up their walk. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, not y'all, me, me and Pastor, not, not me, Pastor Burke. But she was a cat. And her walk changed a little bit. That's a little bit. She still says, praise God. That's what we got five people. Praise God. You know, you can still change your walk and still be sexy. You can change your walk and still have authority. You can still change your walk and still stay in unity. You can still change your walk when you're a carrier to the point of having Christ in your life. And when he's really developing and carrying, he begins expanding who you are and he begins to stretch your flesh. Yeah. Come on. Every now and then it leave a mark. Come on. <laughs> It's the good ones too. Oh, hallelujah. Because everybody don't have these marks. They cost you the changing of your yeah. flesh. Yeah. I'm like, you know what? That used to set you off. I gotta stretch them off. That's right. That ain't gonna set me off. Come on. I've been expanding. Come on. I've been stretched a little bit. I've been changed a little bit. Yeah. All you seen is the marks that was. Because I'm a carrier now. I'm a carrier. So somebody has to see the Jesus development in us. And if they're going to cause him to worship, then I've got to get him out of us. Go ahead for me, Bird. Look what it says. It says, watch this. Go back, go back, go back. Sorry, go back. It says, it says, and it was then that while they were there, the days were completed to the point that she, that she was delivered. And she delivered and brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swallowing clothes, laid him in a manger, because there was no room for him in the inn. Come on. You got to be willing to be out to be in sometimes. That's right. Sometimes birth of Jesus is going to put you out. Yeah. But you're going to be in the inn. You won't have to watch this. Sometimes we told people lies. Come to Jesus, gonna be all right. No, you come to him, you're gonna be rejected. That's right. Come on. You come to him, stuff's gonna have to change. That's right. You come to him, you're gonna have to be a receiver and right. a carrier. You're gonna have to change your walk, your talk, your appetites and affection. Your fear past is gonna have to change. Stuff's gonna have to happen to you if you're really gonna have Christ in your life. Yeah. Amen. 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 
neighbor? I sure hope you're getting it. I'm on my way to Christmas. We had to stop by Mary first. That's right. That's right. That's right. Could you be married this week? Could you receive Jesus? Could you carry him this week? And can you cause him to be birthed in the life of other people? That God will put the Lord in us. Don't be distracted. That's just the enemy trying to mess with somebody. I'm going to stop me for That's right. That's right. I'm here to birth for life. Amen. 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 We come to the point of a birth that has to happen and brings forth and Mary and does it. Yeah. And what I love about this is that, watch this, you may say, how did you get all of that out of this? Because I told you, Mary is a picture of belief that she receives, that she carries, him, and then she births him into life all around her. And she takes him to their place places because the Bible says they took him all the way to Judea. Yeah. Judea is called praise. Yeah. And the last time you took Jesus to your praise. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, they took him to Nazareth. They was taking Jesus. She, she, she literally, as a matter of fact, she did it uncomfortably. Yeah. So don't you ever stop praising because you're uncomfortable. Come on. Because yeah. she carries Jesus while nine months pregnant on a donkey still going to do this. <laughs> And what stops your worship? What hinders your process? What makes you stop? Oh, oh, your cycle's messed up. Yeah, I know, but can you still worship? And can you still carry? And can you still receive? And can you still honor? Can you still choose to give birth to the life of Christ in the lives that you contact? Yes. Yes. Even in the midst of all of that. Come on. While it's uncomfortable, while it's un inconvenient, she's still birthing Jesus. Yeah. Ah! Don't you let the inconveniences of your life make you cause an excuse not to give Jesus yeah. to somebody else. Yeah. I found this out. Come on. He made it inconvenient so that they could birth Jesus. Because yeah. if anybody knows that when things are moving around somebody pregnant, it helps everything else push. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Some of you, stuff going on in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Might be the contraction so that he can birth out the yeah. son yeah. in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Your name? I sure hope you got this. Today, will you be a receiver of the gift of Jesus? Today, could you be a carrier of who he is? I mean, I want folks to see Jesus in your flesh. Could, could, could you be the releaser of who he is into the earth? We know religious stuff, but we didn't know Jesus. That's what messed us up. See, when you really birth Jesus, it's going to mess up religious folk. That's right. Yes. Because yes. religious folk look for wrong, but people like Jesus look for what's right. That's right. So when you see cats coming around, people are like, you don't even look like that. That's just Jesus. That's Jesus. Yes. That's him at work. Oh, she don't look like, oh, that's Jesus. That's him. That's at work. Jesus never went for the religious. He went for the relationship. Yes. yes. Me and you got to make sure we train our brain and train our mind that we don't look at people for where they at, but we look at them at a relationship. Yeah. I'm trying to be a monstrous, a releaser, a birther of who Jesus is in me into somebody else's life. Yeah. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on, stand to your feet. Come on. Father, we worship you today. Yeah. We bless you today. We adore you today. Yeah. I thank you for your love for us and us today.